Okay, so what I'm gonna show you today is a deed skin beam compass that I picked up. It has this uh, nice original box. Came in there. Open it up. Ooh, look at that. That's nice. Um, I got this on eBay. Let's take a look at that. It's got the classic style case. Um, the model is 978, looks like. Of course, made in Germany. Why are the Germans so good at making compasses? I don't know, but they are. They're just hands down the best. And it, of course, has this little pin you pull out to release the case. Look at that color. That blue is gorgeous. That's like a, uh, I don't know, true blue. Um, so this is an old, old, old style beam compass. I don't know when this was made. Uh, I'm just gonna guess like 50s, 60s. They made this style uh, a lot longer before that from what I can tell, maybe back to the turn of the century, like 1900s, early 1900s. Uh, the first time I saw this style of a uh, beam compass, which sometimes people refer to as a trammel, a trammel points, which isn't necessarily the most accurate term. Um, I just imagine them being like huge you know, I figured it was gonna, gonna go on a, on a wood beam. So like, I thought one of these was like this big. And so when I actually, um, that's because there was like in the pictures, there was nothing to like really scale it next to. And I just imagined them bigger. So when I, when I actually got these and they showed up and I saw them, I was like, oh, these are cute. They're so tiny, but uh, very cool design. So I got this from a guy who uh, said that this belonged to his father, which is always the coolest, uh, to me, the coolest, um, type of purchase when you find an old drafting instrument that you know has some history to it that you know isn't just purchased by some reseller or some you know antiquer or whatever uh but someone that you know says this belonged to their father their father bought it in the 60s and they've had it for decades and now they're selling it for some reason i have another um kufel and esser beam compass that uh same story a guy got it from said it would belong to his father so that was really cool um anyways Let's take a look at this. So basically you've got, uh, here, show you this up closer. There's that. You can see inside there, that's the channel that it would fit onto uh, a wood or some other type of beam. There's that. Um, so of course this is meant to go onto some type of a wood beam um it'll show you in a minute if it's onto a standard yardstick and of course the distance here um i'm getting out of order here but the distance that this can clamp onto isn't very thick actually um you see the screw comes out here and this plate is kind of free inside here it's got these two pins that keep it to be uh kind of aligned and uh hopefully have even pressure onto the object you're clamping onto uh, it's not attached. This plate isn't attached to the end of this screw. So if you have this thing backed out all the way, that's really only about a quarter of an inch. And of course, you want to get some more threads engaged. So you want to go even a little bit thinner. Um, this can go on to like a thin metal ruler. That works perfectly fine as well. Of course, with a metal ruler, you have a little bit more wobble to it or flex. Probably not a big issue for the most part. Anyway, so you have your uh, detachable lead holder here. These look like they're... I don't know, they might be like old German silver, nickel silver, they call it. But seeing as how they have a kind of lack of tarnish, they almost look stainless steel. I don't know if that's correct. Um, so that's a lead holder. Of course, you've got a ruling pin attachment that comes with it. Pretty standard for the era. And then this is the uh, other piece, which has the needle. This comes with a nice shoulder point needle. You can see that there. And then, of course, um, fitting's the same. It's got the nice deed skin Germany on the back there. See that? And this is a cool design. So even though this is meant to be fitted onto a large or a fairly large uh, wooden beam, you obviously will adjust this by sliding this back and forth on whatever piece you're attached to. And then that's kind of your course adjust. And your fine adjust is right here. So you've got this spring here spring loaded so it's got tension and of course there's a joint here and this piece swivels like that 
back and forth as opposed to just sliding of course um older design just swivels but that gives you on the tip of this needle you know i don't know maybe a quarter inch of adjustment for fine adjust maybe less but uh let's see here so you just tighten this down and of course being under tension here and being fixed with this nut it's going to stay in place in the direction you go that's your fine adjust micro adjust so that's a really cool feature for this older style compass being compass of course, when I store these things, I like to leave them so they're not under tension on, on the spring. And uh, I've seen ones that have kind of a circular spring around this screw. I like this design better because it has just this kind of curvilinear piece of metal that just bends like that and then, you know, unbends. Um, so I've got a uh, yardstick here, standard yardstick in America. And um, so this yardstick being uh, three feet, 36 inches, so this can easily attach onto here. Get that to pop back in there. Oh, maybe not so easily. I have to get this all the way out. So even to fit onto this yardstick, which is maybe a quarter of an inch, this has to be kind of all the way maxed out. Maybe a little bit more. And that just cinches up onto there. Nice and firm, rigid. And then same thing with the other piece. Now this plate here will just fall down if you have it the opposite of how it uh, goes in. Let me loosen this one up. And then this will go into here. So again, you can just, with this type of a compass, you're only limited to the size of a beam that you have. With this yardstick, I can make a three foot radius. So that's a six foot, not exactly three foot. But I mean, I could get out to whatever, maybe 34 inches. That has a huge, gigantic radius, huge circle. So um, anyways, there you have it. You've got your needle fixed, your um, lead there. Again, if you wanted to, you could swap out the lead, put the lead here and the needle here, and then you could have your lead kind of fixed while you're micro adjusting the, sorry, your needle fixed while you're micro adjusting the lead on this side. And it works just like any other beam compass. Place the needle and of course you've got your nice circle. And again, this allows you to make uh, just gigantic circles. Of course you could have, maybe you can imagine having a set of beams, you know, one maybe eight inches and a 12 inch and so on and so forth up to however long you want to go, uh, just to be practical. Cause you know, if you're making a circle that big, you wouldn't want to swing this giant piece of wood around. However, these are very, uh, very cool design. I like the kind of a uh, vintage style of them. I like the functionality. Um, this seems to be in pretty good shape. Um, it seems like this piece here, the flat piece inside here that clamps onto the wood seems to have been replaced, but whoever did it, uh, did a good job because these screws are still in there and it almost seems like some kind of non-metallic material, but, uh, I'm okay with it because it seems to hold just fine. Um, let's see what we have inside the case. For spares. Okay, so we've got two LEDs, and then this kind of a dark steel needle. This is just a regular point needle, but it does have a nice shoulder needle here that it came with. And I'm not sure if this is double sided. Let's see real quick. That's been a nice tight fit in there. Even with that loosened, it's going to take some effort to get it out. Oh, this is interesting. This needle has some like knurling on it right there. I've never seen that before. Let me see if I can give you a close up view of that. So that needle has some knurling on it, which helps it to grab very well inside this tip. Also makes it very hard to get outside of the tip. And it looks like it is It is double sided, so you can see there it's got a shoulder needle point and then just a standard taper needle point. That's very cool. I've never seen that in a needle with this knurling where you would grip it. Very cool. So there you have it. That's the beautiful, old fashioned, old school, super sick D skin beam compass. Um, I can't imagine most people would need one of these. I picked this up because uh, I do plan on making 
some larger and eventually very large compositions, perhaps on wood or maybe a wall inside my house. So when I saw this, uh, I had to get it. Plus I just am obsessed with collecting vintage drafting equipment. There it is, the Deetskin Beam Compass. Um, pretty cool, pretty nifty. Thanks for watching.